This episode of the Jeep Talk Show is brought to you by Bavarian, Bavarian-born and German-bred line of specialized Jeep and Ram products, engineered by ORZ GmbH in the heart of Munich. Bavarian products bring the strength and intelligence in design you expect from German engineering. Products such as Bavarian's Geo Rise 45 suspension, DTX rack, and Bonds wheels that will keep your Jeep or Ram looking great and performing flawlessly for years. Our European customers find us at mindjeep.de. Now our U.S. customers can buy directly from ORZ USA at bawarion.com. That's B-A-W-A-R-R-I-O-N.com. Or contact our Carson City, Nevada facility at 1-800-815-1525. Hey, real quick, Josh. So uh, I think it was Bill that looked it up. Uh, the GmbH, that is the equivalent of LLC in Germany. Is that right? Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I something new every day. And I think I had uh, I was very proud of myself because I, it took me a while to actually read the the m e i n jeep dot d e, and then I was really proud of myself because I came up with me in jeep, but the way you said it, it sounds more German, and I bet you it is mine mein, jeep. Yeah, mein. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this episode is also brought to you by G-Tops. In the beginning, the idea of G-Tops was to simply let the light into your Jeep. Many Jeepers take the top off. Freedom Tops make this easy and easy to store. What if you could let the light in every time you drive your Jeep? Rain, so, snow, sunny, even the dead of night. It doesn't matter. That's G-Tops letting you enjoy the view outside simply and easily. I'm, I'm uh, going back to Twilight Zone. There's a man on my Jeep. You know where you're looking at the porthole? <laughs> oh well, there's something later in the show that I I was going to go that direction anyway, so kind of beat me to it. <laughs> wow, we've been separated for a long time, and I'm still reading your mind. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Tony, and welcome to the Jeep Talk Show, where we put the fun in off-road fun. This is the only show where you can hear uh, Jeep owners talk about things like um, men sucking on your on your top and giant tires, and not get weird looks. So strap in, grab your favorite beverage, and get ready to laugh, learn, and have a damn good time. On tonight's episode, in our news stories, the Avengers are back. And maybe not the ones you're thinking about. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> this is this is one of your uh, uh, opportunities to say timely reference, Tony. In our Jeep Gladiator update, to wash or not to wash? Gorge. <laughs> <laughs> in our must-have stuff for your Jeep, PRP seat covers. Josh, were you aware of seat covers? You're going to say yes. I know you are. I wasn't aware of them. Well, yeah, except, you know, I, the PRP, I, I'm familiar with this, like, platelet-rich therapy that they got going on right now. And so that's where my mind went with this. I was like, they're introducing platelet-rich therapy in Jeep seats. How is this going to work? No, it's not PRT. It's PRP. I, I, I'm sorry to hear about your health issues. That's that's too bad. It's radio. It's <laughs> nothing but commercial. Are you ready? It's time. For the Jeep Talk Show with hosts Tony, Josh, Wendy, and Chuck. Hey, Jeepers, it's your old pal Josh, and I've got just enough time between jobs to wipe my ass and do the show, <laughs> and I'm all out of TP, so I hope you're ready for this one. Man, you're lying. You don't wipe your ass. You don't have time. <laughs> it just makes, <laughs> just makes laundry day a little more, uh, a little longer. There's this guy named Daniel Tosh. He's got a show on uh, on Comedy Central called Tosh.0. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, Ch- of, Tosh 2.0 now, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, he did this one skit called, the, you know, because there's the, the Immaculate Conception. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, he tried to do the Immaculate Shit uh, or the Immaculate Dump. And so he had one of his interns, uh, oh, God. you know, drop a deuce and then go the entire day without wiping. <sighs> You'll it's have to just, watch the rest for yourself. I'm and you stand it. up. You, you, I mean, this has happened sometimes. And you stand up out of your chair and, and you think the chair is stuck to you. And it's just not a, not a comfortable feeling. Goodness <laughs> great. It's kind of like when you had that wreck in your XJ. The, you, the cushion was stuck to your ass there for a while. Yeah. No, there was <laughs> definitely a lot of pucker uh, there going on. Yeah. All right. The, the Avenger is a British TV series from 1961 to 1969, and it introduced us to Patrick McNee Mc, yeah, and Diana Rigg. You know not Diana Rigg, I bet you. Don't you yes, remember her? I yes, yes, yes. She, you know, I'm thinking that uh, the Austin Powers stuff, I bet you, really came... All from loosely this, based on yes, hundred percent. Came from this. Question. There's, 
definitely a little bit of influence there. You you can't you can't argue that. Yeah, because it's a it was a British um, spy versus spy. I would even say it was sci-fi because they had a lot of gadgets and gizmos. Uh, well, you remember the series. old uh, Mission Impossible, the original Mission yes. Impossible series? Oh, just, I mean, same kind of cut from the same cloth there. My dad uh, was a big fan of that show. He would watch that one. Uh, and, and back, that was back Love in the it. days where you didn't have a lot to pick from. And and in yeah. fact, you didn't have a lot of TVs yeah. in the house and you had to watch whatever the hell your dad was watching if you wanted to do something other than a nap or <laughs> bitch about something. <laughs> so much later... Uh, the Avengers returned, but this time it was part of the MCU. You know, a group of superheroes that, as far as we know, weren't spies or British. Mm. <laughs> so unlike the prior Avengers, uh, this Avenger 4 by e is not sold in America. You can't get it in America. Uh, maybe, maybe we have a bad attitude or something. I don't know. <laughs> maybe we complain about Just what Jeeps really are. I mean, it's not our fault, but you can blame us. I mean, we'll, we'll take that. So have you heard anything about the Avenger uh, prior? I don't know how much time you have to even look at Jeep information anymore. You used to do it weekly. So what I, so what I had heard about this one was, and it, correct me if I'm wrong, that this is actually on, this is the, the cuter ute. This is the smallest ute that Jeep is, is, is possibly offering. Um, I believe this is smaller than the Renegade. If this is the Jeep that I'm thinking of. It's hard to tell by they, the picture that we have in the show notes so that you, you guys can see. Teased, they teased this a couple of years ago. Jeep mm -hmm. knew that they were going to be doing this. Um, whether or not it was or was not going to be sold in the U.S., I don't know if that had been established yet. But there was going to be a subcompact addition to Jeep's lineup. They were going to have something in that market where it's going to be smaller than the Renegade. It's going to be a subcompact, as if the Renegade wasn't small enough. Um, <laughs> and it's going to apply to that, to that, uh, to that niche. Um, I think this is that why it's not being sold in the U S right now, I think is well, because of the market, frankly, nobody wants to buy electric well, vehicles. Europe and has small it streets. Small and as, yeah. And, and make it as small and as cute as you want. I don't care if you add four wheel drive, nobody wants an all electric vehicle, <laughs> not selling. And so I think that FCA or uh, Stellantis rather kind of saw the, the writing on the wall here in the States and they said, yeah, this isn't going to be a winner there. So let's try this in Europe. Let's see how it does. If we if it just gets stellar sales, maybe we'll go ahead and add it to the US lineup. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to see it here. So it's check this out. Yeah. So check this out. The Jeep gets four-wheel drive and a lifted suspension. But you know, they don't say what the lift is. I am guessing no, one it looks inch like maybe. About three quarters of an inch. Yeah. If you're looking at the picture that we're looking at, it's it it looks like it has a similar stance to like a renegade track uh trailhawk. You know, you mm -hmm. get oh, yeah, exactly. a bit of a boost and maybe one size bigger tires. If that you got might get some traction. Yeah. It looks a lot like a Grand Cherokee to me, but you're right. It probably is really small. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you're Grand aware of this Cherokee or not, but the Renegade it, was very popular in uh, on the circuses. Uh, the clowns I, really liked it. This, now, this looks like a clown car. <laughs> I was going to say this, it, to your Grand, your Grand Cherokee, if you were to take a Grand Cherokee, um, drop it into dry ice and chop it in half. That's kind of what you get here. It's a shrunken down, smaller version of a, of a grand, but so, probably without half the bells and whistles, let yeah. alone luxury. So the the Avenger four by E, yes, it's a four by E. It has a, a tiny one point two liter gasoline engine fitted Ooh, with tiny. a fitted with a mild hybrid technology. It's a three cylinder turbo. Oh, good God. This sounds like it'd be oh, great wow. on a motor, uh, not a motorcycle, on a uh, lawnmower uh, that uh, develops 136 horsepower, which isn't bad. I mean, that's that's, that's Jeep 4.0 levels not there. Not bad. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the last three cylinder car that we had here in the States, I think, was the Geo Metro. And that was one of the cylinders was dead, right? That, that's. <laughs> <laughs> you had to pay extra for that third cylinder. Yeah. And it, only sometimes it worked. Uh, and I think that thing had like 46 horsepower. So, I mean, it was just gutless. I actually owned one. The first de wedding I ever DJed, I DJed out of a Geo Metro. <laughs> well, once you, once you get in there, it's hard to get out. I understand. <laughs> Took out all the seats except for the driver's seat. But oh, I got all my gear in you there. You had a the hard enough time putting all this stuff yeah, in the yeah. XJ. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, the uh, this... Uh, uh, it's 136 horsepower and routes the output of the wheels via a six-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission. What? 
dual clutch, automatic, okay, whatever. Joining the ice uh, are two electric motors, one at the front of uh, the vehicle and one at the rear, each <laughs> developing woohoo, 28 horsepower. Well, you don't need much to drive a, a, a milk crate down the road. I mean... <laughs> Top speed, 121 miles an hour. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, right. <laughs> at speeds yeah. up to 19 miles an hour, the Avenger 4xe uh, always works in 4x4 mode with a 50-50 split between the two axles. Up to 19 miles an hour. Okay. Yeah. Uh, from 19 to 56, it defaults to front-wheel drive. Oh, yeah, because, you know, front-wheel drive is wonderful. Uh, but the rear motor is always ready to intervene should the need arise and <laughs> go faster than 56 miles an hour. And the rear motor is uh, disengaged to reduce fuel consumption. Wait, I thought, I, I thought the rear motor is electric. Yeah, it is. I guess it's a so parasitic drag or. <laughs> That's what I'm like. I'm like, wait a minute here. Where does the fuel consumption come in into an electric engine, electric motor, especially one that is detached from the rest of the drivetrain up front and, and is in the back? Maybe it ejects it, figuring if you're going 56 miles an hour, we're going to dump some of, some of the weight of the vehicle, improve okay, miles okay. per gallon. So you just have to circle back you, and pick get, it up. <laughs> you get all-wheel drive up to 19 miles per hour because reasons. Yeah, I, I guess there's you know too many uh, burnouts. They don't want you spinning the tires. Uh, you get uh, better acceleration, uh, better launch. It's actually going to it's going to feel like the car is actually quicker than it really is. Uh, more traction in rain and snow too. I'm sure. I suppose for you know uh, because yeah, you're not going to be doing a whole lot more than 19 miles per hour when you're driving in ice mm -hmm. or taking off in the rain. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's, uh, I don't know how they come up with this stuff, but, uh, yeah, I just found the whole thing interesting, especially the, uh, the, the 1.2 liter engine. <laughs> so, uh, the, uh, it, they, again, it's not going to be sold in America, uh, which is the majority of our audience. And you might say, why would you even talk about it on the show? <laughs> well, sometimes you can see what's coming from us, uh, from overseas. Uh, think of it as uh, radar right before Pearl Harbor. So that's, that's what we're doing no, for 100%. you. And, and like I was saying, Jeep was teasing this car at least two years ago, if not, if not more. They, they've been talking about a subcompact uh, segment for a while now. It's something that they, they've never really been in. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is, this is sort of their entrance into that, into that segment, into that market. Um, and again, with, with most this thing being, being mostly electric, obviously it has an internal combustion engine, a very, very small one about the size of a, of a motorcycle engine. Um, but, um, I, I could just see that there's, there's no, there's no need for this car here. There's, there's no, there's not a lot of people that are, are looking for this kind of vehicle that don't already have another half a dozen to choose from, from, you know, four or five other manufacturers. It, it would be like, um, It'd be like putting another hooker out on the corner when there's 17 of them already there. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you already have plenty of choice. You don't want any of it. Um, and so you're probably just going to keep driving. You know what the question so, is, though, whenever you go up to a group of hookers? Oh, do tell. Dentures or not? Ah, gosh dang. <laughs> a few Bob knows what I'm talking about. All right, so uh, yeah, I don't know. It's this is it's interesting. It's and, and and the cool thing that I just thought about was you were talking about the uh, Jeep wanting to get into this market. Uh, they really have expanded uh, at least their coverage of the market because they have really small oh, yeah. electric or uh, hybrid electric vehicles, and then they have the, like the Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer, which are just huge. They're like Suburbans used to be uh, way back when. Uh, you take the whole family uh, off a cliff whole if you want to. Or yeah. cute, yeah. So it's it's interesting from that standpoint that they're getting a, a very wide array of Jeeps. Uh, of course, I'm, and I think you, are only interested in two, and this the, the primarily off-road uh, models. Uh, and, and when I say off-road models, I mean the, the real off-road ones, the Wranglers and the Gladiators. Yeah. Um, and uh, But as long as they keep making those, I'm happy with it. And as long as they don't add IFS to either one of them. 
Yeah, unfortunately, I, I think that that is just going to be a matter of time uh, yeah. with the, the EPA restrictions getting more and more ridiculous every year. Um, I mean, the kind of stuff they're talking about needing by 2030. I, I honestly don't see yeah. how the Wrangler is going to, or the Gladiator. For I, that don't matter, see any, I don't see how any, I don't see how any manufacturer is going to be able to survive if they're having to do EV vehicles. Uh, the technology isn't there yet. I don't think it's going to be there by 2030 either. Yeah, no, we and we've beat that horse uh, uh, dead into the dirt. For and we're going to continue yeah, beating that horse because yes, it definitely deserves it. All right, so uh, I don't remember if you did this with your XJ or not. Uh, did you ever replace the fender flares on your XJ, or were they the the, the yeah, stock uh, ones? So I uh, deleted mine. I've I've got a, um, and then I did the uh, the fender flare or the fender cut. Uh, so my, mm -hmm. my fender flares are gone. My fenders have been cut. Was I it the cut have, and fold? I did do the cut and fold in yeah. the rear. Yep. Um, and, uh, and all that. So, uh, but no, I've got a set of, uh, fake bushwhackers, um, uh, for, for, but it's really knock I, I off bushwhackers. It. Wow. Yeah. I didn't think that was yeah. a thing. No, they are. And they fit like crap. So <laughs> they're not on the Jeep currently. <laughs> the front ones, uh, the front ones are okay. The rear is just, they, the, the way that it is with the door seam and, and everything, and you've got part of the fender that stays on the on the vehicle, and then part of the fender that yep. that comes out with the door, it, it just doesn't line up right. It looks like crap. So that's it's what you get for trying to be cheap. Mm -hmm. So you get what you pay for. What was your motivation uh, for uh, the the fender flares? Two words, Tony. State patrol. Ah. Yeah. See, here in Oregon, and I think Washington has it as well. And your, of course, your state may vary. You listening to this, and of right. course, you as well, Tony. Um, but up here, we have uh, a rule uh, that is very strictly enforced uh, that says at least fifty percent of the tire must be covered. Oh, well, that's um, nice. I thought so, it was a hundred percent. Um, I, I think they give you some leeway at least, mm -hmm. but I, I've got like less than twenty-five percent probably. Um, with, you know, no flares and things being cut and, and, you know, backspacing and all that kind of good stuff. Right. So we all love making our Jeeps look custom. Uh, and most of us just buy someone else's custom work and then bolt it to our Jeep. Uh, but the, the fender flares that came on my Jeep, uh, JT, I was going to say Jeep dog show on my JT are fine, but never, uh, the, I wouldn't say they were very custom. Uh, for those people that are trying to make customizations for functionality, why do they change the fender flares? And uh, you did fender flares because uh, of, uh, of the, the local laws. Was there a reason why you removed your fender flares, or did this nature take care of that while you were off-road? Uh, part of it was the, the arc of the build. Um, once you get up to a certain size of tires, I, I don't care what Jeep you're driving, you're going to start having to cut. Um, at a certain point, Jeeps can only manage a certain diameter of tire without modifying the body. Mm -hmm. Um, especially without, especially if you, if you don't massively bump stop the suspension and reduce your, your up travel. Right. Um, I've seen, you know, 40 inch tires on, on stock fenders more or less, but they have maybe an inch and a half of up travel <laughs> in the suspension. It's all and about the flex. Believe, <laughs> I don't believe in sacrificing suspension travel for for um for the sake of of fitting a tire, mm -hmm. uh, tire uh, cutting or body run, damage, right? If you want to run a certain size of tire, well, then you need to do what you need to do to run that tire, and without sacrificing the capabilities of your suspension. Mm -hmm. And that generally, ninety nine percent of the time, means modifying the body of the vehicle. And most aftermarket fender flares sort of have this in mind, um, and they're going to hide that cut that you're going to do. Um, you're going to be doing some body work, going to be shaving some metal. That arc may not have the the shape that the wheel opening used to have. Your cuts may not be straight. You may have to fold some metal and stuff like that. The fender flares hide all of that, um, and so and not only that, but also gives you a larger opening. And generally, um, in, in some cases, they actually provide a little bit of armor as well, especially if you right. get into um, like the, the metal aspect of size. But generally, those they also come with uh, some quarter panel protection and stuff like that as well. You're not getting just a fender flare. You're getting 
a piece of armor. Mm -hmm. Well, that, and I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, that's the one of the questions I want to ask. If we all agree that we do want to change the the fender flares on our Jeeps, and it could be any model Jeep uh, other than an Avenger or a Renegade, um, do you get metal or plastic? I've heard some detrimental things about getting metal fender flares. Well, um, it, it depends on what on how you wheel. Uh, if you get into very off-camber situations, you're reeling around a lot of trees, you're in deep rocks, things like that. Well, there's very a, a very strong likelihood that those fenders are going to come in contact with a an object that doesn't move as easy as the metal on your Jeep does. Mm -hmm. And what happens if you have a, a big metal fender flare that is more or less bolted to the quarter panel and you bump into something with that fender flare, it very well could transfer that energy into the body as well and what you end up with is a bent quarter panel a pushed inside mm -hmm. you know something like that um whereas if you had a plastic you know that's why they call them bush crackers um if you have a plastic uh, fender flare like a bushwhacker for instance and you bump up against that uh, against the edge of the trail on that rock or that tree well the plastic is going to give before the metal does and it's going to crack it's going to break it's going to it's going to do something and it's not going to you know as much right uh, less likely or not as much less likely right. to dent the, the dent the fender as, as if you had a metal one now have you seen these ones where they they take that into account for the metal uh metal flares and they actually uh they don't initially they do mount to the fender but they have a structure that mounts it in further so that it's uh, up against like using the frame or something that's more right. substantial. Right. Yeah, you get a little bit of a uh, of a little pogo there, a little a little stick that kind of goes out and gives you some a little bit of reinforcement and, mm -hmm. and stuff. And that's when you get into again, you get what you pay for. And when you if you're going to be into some serious wheeling, you you know that you're going to be dragging your body uh, against the side of the trail or a tree or a rock or something like that, um, because those are the trails that you wheel in. Well, you need to make sure that the armor and the accessories that you're modifying your Jeep with can accommodate the kind of wheeling and the terrain that you find yourself in more. So often. that's that's a really good point, and you and this makes sense. You have to consider how you're going to use the tool. I mean, that's really what we're talking about here, uh, because you need the right tool for the right job. And of course, you can do uh, you can look at it in a general way too. It's like, well, what is this flare going to do for me in this situation, and in this situation, and in this situation. So uh, I personally like the idea of metal flares um, and uh, as long as they have the proper support that you're not going to be using the, the flexible uh, uh, thin metal that, that makes up the body mm -hmm. of the Jeep. So hey, let me, let's move on to this next question I have, or the next thing I yeah. want to talk about, which is yeah. wide versus narrow. Now you've already mentioned some legal reasons about wide versus narrow, uh, so wide makes sense. It gives you more tire coverage. Um, I think it's better in rain. Uh, I'm sure you've, uh, experienced the roost, the front rooster tails. Oh yeah. <laughs> lots, lots. It makes and, and honestly, I, it's kind of cool as you kind of come up is. to a stop sign and, and, and as the, the, the rotation slows down, the rooster tail kind of dies down a little bit. There's this point in time where where it looks really cool for a, for about 50 feet. And then of course you come to a stop and the water kind of all drops and everything like that. But so there is a, there is a bonus to not having flares, but there's also a lot of negatives to it. You know, you get a lot of, a lot of splash onto the body, you get rocks, mud, of course. And that's the worst, honestly, especially this time of year, you know, at the beginning of the season, you know, it's, it's may, um, you still have a lot of the April showers that have happened. The trails are probably a little, a little moist still in, in some cases, it may be 75 outside, but the trail is still three quarters halfway mud. And so as you're going through hard and, and dry spots and soft and wet spots, and suddenly the tires load up and you got some mud that's on your face, on your cheek, on the yes. back of your seat. It's on <laughs> or, the inside of the rocks. How the hell did or, that happen? You it know, sounds yeah. like it's hailing. No, it's just the, the, the rocks that are in the mud. <laughs> and so, yeah, fender flares, um, mud flaps, you know, all those kinds of things, when done properly, when in the right position and everything, they can protect you from all of that stuff. And, of course, the width of the fender flares comes into play with that. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there any off-road negative to having too wide of a, 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 a fender flare, other than not being able to fit down the trail, obviously? Well, yeah, you could get into a situation where, you know, you're, you're at full stuff. 
And that means when, when that corner of the suspension cannot go up anymore, the body can't come down anymore, that wheel is shoved up into the wheel well, maybe you even have the wheel turned. And when you're at full stuff and at a turn, you definitely don't want to be dragging lugs of your tire on your, on your, uh, on your fender flare. Oh, wow. And so that is width, can, width can come into a situation here. It can, can come into a negative here. If your suspension isn't set up properly, if you haven't clearanced your, you know, if you don't have the right clearance and stuff, then you can start going into self clearance when the tires are just going to rip those fender flares right off for you because they're in the way. Yeah. Self clearancing. So let me ask you this. We've, we've covered the other things I was going to talk about already. So let, let me ask you this, just your opinion. Um, sure. Can you customize your Jeep and going along and saying, oh, this is, this is, I need this because I was taking off road and this is going to fix this and blah, blah, blah. And, and sometimes it's just fun to make the modifications. So sure. are you customizing your Jeep into an off-road only or mostly off-road vehicle? I think a lot of people don't think about this when they get carried away uh, at Amazon or Motobuilt or Genrite and they're buying parts. They're just really excited about getting these parts and thinking about doing the off-road this weekend or EJS. It's going to be so cool to have this at EJS type thing. And then all of a sudden mm -hmm. it's like, oh, well, I can't, I really can't take this to go do this like on road someplace or uh, maybe a legal ramification. Now I've got, now I've got to put mud flaps on there before I can drive it on the road. So is there a danger in doing too much cost customization and turning your, your Jeep into an off-road only rig? Well, you, you raise an interesting point because that, that brings to mind a company called Metal Cloak. And Metal Cloak is really making a name for, for themselves over the last you know, five or ten years in the off-road industry, especially in the Jeep world. And they have very, very unique fender designs. And these aren't flares, actually. They pretty much replace your entire fender. And it's a triangulated style of fender flare, which goes very, very high and is very, very narrow. Now they have, I think, like four, six, eight-inch varieties. You can, get, you can get them fatter in order to accommodate maybe state laws and, and offsets and backspacing, things like that. Or you that. don't like rooster tails. <laughs> but generally speaking, these are... You're going to find these fender flares on more off-road only rigs mm -hmm. generally because of their design and how little they cover the tire. And it's meant for, for the sake of stuffing that wheel, that tire up into that corner as much as you possibly can next to zero bump stop. I mean, maybe just a little bit just to prevent the, the shock from bottoming out on itself. And that's it. It's meant for maximum stuff and maximum articulation. And there's other manufacturers out there that design their stuff for that purpose. And you may end up inadvertently, because you're buying for looks, you're buying for performance, end up modifying your Jeep into an illegal status or a non-roadworthy status. And you could end up not passing your next inspection. You're not being able to get tags. You could end up getting a ticket on the road because... Uh, you know, a, a gung-ho state patrol or a sheriff just doesn't like the look of your Jeep because, well, you got too much tire, tire sticking out mm -hmm. and he's going to get you a ticket. Yeah. So you got to take all these aspects into account and check with your local laws because honestly, 25 minutes up the road, just 20 minutes up the road is Washington State for me. And Washington State requires off-road vehicles to have mud flaps. That is not a requirement here in Oregon where I live. Oh, nice. I didn't but know that. if I go 25 minutes up the road suddenly my vehicle is no longer street legal. So just keep that in mind, those of you who live near borders. And you need to, and actually I'm glad you mentioned that because you need to check these things out before you make these decisions. You don't want to make a, a six, uh, $1,200, $1,500 purchase and then it looks really good uh, in your garage. And then you have to spend a 20% restocking fee. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you got to send it back. Or be like, uh, like Chuck and make a desk uh, out of a Jeep for you. Oh, hey, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I want to use it, damn it. So anyway, oh, take these that. things into consideration. I, I doubt that we've made it easier for you. Uh, but we hopefully we've informed you so you can make the right decision for you. Oh, and speaking about uh, um, Washington and mud flaps and stuff, uh, I, I, I are you in the area of Oregon uh, that you're soon going to be in Idaho? No, 
<laughs> I wish, honestly. God, I wish. Really, though, for everything that's going on. No, because downtown Portland is just a hop, skip, and a jump for me. So I'm I'm in the thick of it all. So no. No, I knew you weren't, I'm, but I figured you'd I'm love still that all reference. Oregon, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> Bawarian proudly presents GeoRise 45, the first true sports suspension for the Jeep Wrangler JL with a lift height of an incredible 4.5 inches. It's the world's first Jeep JL suspension system with geometry correction for both the front and rear axle. System includes dynamically engineered shock valving, frequency tuned springs, and more. System lifts up to 37 inch tall tires with standard OE low fenders and can clear an outstanding 39 inch tall tire when the Bawarian X tenders or Mopar high fenders are installed. Get your GeoRise 45 at Bawarian.com or at 800-815-1525 right away. Bawarian, premium performance parts. Yeah, it's funny. Um, I was uh, talking to God, Bill. Voiceover yeah. guy for them. I need his yeah, processing. Yeah. Christ. So I made what a the, voice. I made the comment uh, to Bill uh, last episode about uh, last flagship. And uh, I said, uh, isn't that a great voice? He goes, it sounds like AI to me. <laughs> So I mean, it's like it's not real. <laughs> he's down. He's 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 lower Sam Elliott register down there. I can't even get that low. It, it is all kinds of gravel down there. I can only sound like Good that Lord. when I have a head cold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great base. Man. Yeah. Great base. Speaking about sounding, you're going to scream whenever you get a G top with uh, not with horror, <laughs> but with the with cheer with glee. and happiness and glee. Thank you. G tops is a patented system that has been around since 2008. It's not a sheet of plastic that stretches across the width of your Jeep. You know who I'm talking about. It's a freedom top plus it's OEM plus G tops blocks 99% of the UVA and UVB rays made of impact resistant acrylic, like aircraft canopies. G tops comes with a sna uh, snap in sunshade that will stay in place. Even with the most aggressive off-roading, somebody's going to say, hold my beer. Uh, that, yeah, that's right. fine. Challenge just, accepted. Just give me <laughs> to send the do it video and send it to us. So G tops comes with a five year or 50,000 mile limited warranty. How much does it cost to have G tops installed in your factory freedom panels is about $1,200 and it's available for JKs, JLs and JTs. Just go to gtops.com today for more information. Oh, and Josh, great news. You, not you, the female Jeep you, can win a set of G-Tops for your Jeep exclusively Woo! here on the Jeep Talk Show. Listen to the end of this episode for more details on the G-Top giveaway. You know, I did that uh, the, the, last, uh, the uh, last flagship we did, and I forgot I didn't talk about how to win the G-Tops at the end of that uh, flagship. Oh. So we'll have to make sure we do it uh, this time. Gladiator. My name is Gladiator. Gladiators. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Gladiator. <laughs> oh, it stopped too soon. So, uh, uh, to wash or not to wash? How dare you? Larry, Larry's going, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Can you... Last time I checked, there's no R in the spelling of wash. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I like it. I, he he doesn't say wash too much. But he says washer. So he's consistent though. So uh, love you, Larry. But anyway, for your for your Jeep, do you wash it or not? That's uh, that's kind of a question because you can kind of uh, lose uh, Jeeper points if you wash your vehicle, especially if you wash it too often. Uh, I, I, yeah. I don't know. It, it really depends on the Jeep. Um, you know, I, I think the newer that your Jeep is, the more likely that you're probably going to wash it more often. The older your Jeep is, the less roadworthy or legal it is. Chances are the less likely washing your Jeep more often. So I, I think that it kind of comes with the territory of, of the Jeep that you drive. So this is probably going to set the women off. But so you're saying it. You're saying like if you're in a long term relationship, you're less likely mm. to pay attention to it. <laughs> well, I've I've had I've had my Jeep for God. It's been uh, 15, 17 years, something like that. 
Um, now I, I understand over the last eight years, the Jeep has sat more than it's driven, but even when I was, um, when I was wheeling it and driving it all the time, I would go a year without washing it. Yeah. I, I was probably the last, the last few years, the Jeep was on the road, um, on a regular basis. I was probably about a once a year wash, maybe twice. Mm -hmm. And generally it's and honestly it probably wouldn't even be that much but we've got this organ and clay up here yes. which I've described in the past as snotty peanut butter and it will stain paint so if you've got clay in your neck of the woods you might be a jeeper who might opt to wash their jeep a little bit more often just for the sake of the stains in the paint right but, right um which may vary so uh it's it was time for the 2021 jeep talk show gladiator to uh, have its inspection sticker updated. Actually, April uh, was uh, was when it was due. And um, uh, my uh, my oldest daughter, actually both daughters, uh, work at a Mercedes dealership nearby. And uh, they have a huge, a huge, absolutely huge shop. And they do state inspections there. So uh, oh, wow. all I have to do is ask her if she doesn't mind uh, uh, taking the Gladiator to work and uh, get it inspected and then uh, driving it home. So it's, it's, it's great. And also, too, uh, they're top notch. I mean, the the, the technicians well, and stuff Mercedes over there. Mercedes dealership, yeah. white glove service. Come yeah. on, man. <laughs> they're they're top notch and uh, uh, regular beatings. Make sure that they they pay close attention oh, to things. Oh, sure. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, I uh, uh, she uh, I was uh, it didn't happen around the end of April because she says they get really busy, as you can well imagine, uh, with inspections uh, during towards the end mm. of the month. So, yeah, so yeah, I, uh, I, I, I forgot about it, uh, except my wife was driving the, the Gladiator uh, yesterday, and I went, oh, my God, if she looks at the sticker, she's going to freak out. She hates driving any vehicle with the inspection sticker out. I've gone a year and a half before a cop gave me a ticket <laughs> on, the, on the XJ. <laughs> he literally walked into my garage and was so he could look at the sticker, because I don't think he could believe what he saw. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, but he just was he doing a patrol in the neighborhood and saw your Jeep in the driveway and was just like, no, no, wait a I, I, minute. He was in there. He was around someplace, and I drove by him, and he, I guess, he spun oh. around and came up and then parked out in front of the, and by the that driveway. Time you were in the garage. I was in yeah, the garage, okay. and he yeah. literally had to walk in the garage, and he was just like dumbfounded looking at it. He goes, I, I had to oh. double check. So I probably got, a, probably could have got him for a warrantless uh, search. Uh, illegal oh, yeah. search. Hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> but you mean the you know all you have to do is get an inspection sticker and then uh, it, it, it goes That's away. A fix it ticket is what we call them up here. Exactly. So, but I found it. I thought it was really funny because I never had a had a police officer in my house uh, before or garage so for that matter. They, I, I, we don't have inspections up here like like that, and so I'm completely unfamiliar with that that whole aspect of it. So, do they if you? Can they tow your vehicle if you don't have a, a current inspection or something like that? I mean, how far does it go? They they probably could, but that's not anything. They they don't even pay attention to it much around here. We also have a front license plate law, and they don't really pay attention yeah. to that either. Uh, yeah, uh, we got those here too. Twenty twenty five. Uh, the uh, inspections are going away. We will no longer Ooh. have to have inspections. So Which anyway, will pay twice as much for your tags. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I, I know that the businesses that do the inspections, I think they're like 25 bucks and it, oh, that's not bad, they're not making a living revenue stream that, yeah, they're going to be losing on now. So, well, yeah, but it's not much. I mean, I guess it depends on what all you do at your shop, but anyway, so, um, she, uh, she took it, uh, uh, actually she arranged with my wife coming home and <laughs> say, Hey, could you, can you meet me? Can you bring the, the gladiator by here? Cause it's on the way home. Uh, she was over mm -hmm. at her mom's house yesterday and, um, so she goes, uh, and when Cassie tells her that, uh, the inspection sticker, uh, is out, she, then that's when she looks and notices that it's been out since April <laughs> and literally, the whole time. and literally yeah, gasps. Kind of <gasps> and I was trying to keep it down on the down low. Cause I like telling her when yeah, it's taken right. care of instead of <laughs> you're, you're driving it, you're potentially a target right now. And she yeah. knows I go a long time without it. And uh, the way she tells me is, yeah, you're white, but uh, they'll pull me over because uh, I'm Mexican. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, you know, irrational fears are irrational fears. Sure. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, she takes it over there to Mercedes dealership and drives my uh, my daughter's uh, uh, new um, uh, vehicle home. 
and uh, uh, Cassie gets it all taken care of and stuff. But they literally, and and I don't know, maybe maybe a lot of new vehicle uh, uh, manufacturers do this. They literally take a video of the technician that is going to be inspecting your vehicle. They do a walk around because they're checking t- tread depth, uh, the ba- uh, the brake, uh, if your brakes need to be replaced, uh, all well, it's kinds probably of stuff. A little bit of of CYA because if if you know a week after that um you get in an accident and the brakes had were determined that they had failed or something like that it's probably going to come back on the inspector or something I, I i would imagine it's it's a bit of a of a liability issue right but i mean they literally do a video where the technician is talking about the video where they're showing your vehicle oh and i told and, and cassie got the link uh for that and showed it to me and i said well, what's the deal? You work there. Couldn't, couldn't there have been any, couldn't you told him to do something like, well, cause she, you know, you see the big sticker on the side of the gladiator. It'd be like, uh, in, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, uh, inspecting the cheap talk show gladiator. Am I, and I, and I, now I'm a new listener, you know, something is to spice it up a little bit. Get me the video. I'll do a voiceover. <laughs> Don't you worry. I have the video. I actually put it up on our discord server earlier today. Um, but anyway, they, uh, once they, they did the, I mean, the video is not that big a deal. I, after Cassie got home, uh, I, I went out to, uh, make sure there were certain items put back in a certain way so that if I needed to mm-hmm. grab them and point them at somebody, mm-hmm. I could do so yeah. very quickly. <laughs> and I, I went ahead and moved the Jeep up a little bit cause she was parked a little f- too far down the driveway and <clears throat> I was getting out closing the door and I noticed this glare coming off of, of the, of the Jeep. Specifically, the tire. They armoralled the tires. Did they detail the truck? They did. Not only, Holy not shit. only did they armor wow. all the tires, which I'm sure they cleaned them up because I had rock rash on it. From, well, that means they washed the body too. They washed the body. I mean, when I told uh, washed the windows, they yeah. vacuumed it out. I'm they sure. cleaned yeah. the inside. So two years of Easter That's Jeep enough. Safari dust have been removed. <laughs> The guy's in there vacuuming for a half hour. God, it just keeps coming out of the carpet. <laughs> I started to ask uh, Cassie if they saved the fries, uh, but I uh, <laughs> love the zombie fries. They just have a special taste to them. But anyway, uh, this was just really cool. I was really surprised by this. And I don't, oh, and by the way, it wasn't a, they because they have an actual car wash at the dealership. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I guess it's for the customers. They can drive them through and also too for the, the loan cars uh, that they, they, uh, they give to people. But this was hand washed. They because of all the hand, sticks. Yeah. I said, that's yeah. good because, you know, you don't put a, a customized vehicle through one of those, those car washes. No, but this not was, with that kind of wrap. Yeah. yeah. They were the hand washed. Hand, and then she told me that they vacuumed the inside. I didn't even notice that, but they, they went through all the inside. They well, armor all the tires. I down the driveway. Who the hell cleaned my Jeep? Yeah. <laughs> and that's the question to wash or not to wash. I mean, I didn't wash it. I had, you know, I have a, that uh, that best top, uh, and you always have to pronounce this for me. Toner cover, tonneau, tonneau, the tonneau cover for the back bed, and that uh, that uh, Utah dust was really embedded in that. So I was planning on on running the the sponge and the water over the Jeep, and really mainly to get all that dust out of the 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 top of the uh, the bed cover, because uh, sometimes that stuff will get in there and stay if you don't get it out of there. Yeah. So don't have to, it's all taken care of. It's all nice and shiny and God, like a new Jeep. Then like, like it rolled off the, off the uh, showroom floor. Yeah. I didn't notice any kind of smell. Uh, I wonder, uh, what kind of smell spearmint, uh, uh, there's all kinds of little, you know, you, you, uh, did you ever work at a, a car wash type thing or uh, go no, to the car washes a bunch where you put the, but, they buy the spray for $2 right, and 50 cents yeah, and right. do you it's want, little, do you want to spray it in there? Squares, it's like, right. yeah, spray the Jeep and then spray it in front of me. I want to walk through it for my date. <laughs> <laughs> you smell just like a new car. I <laughs> <laughs> got that new car smell. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so that's kind of the way I'd been doing it. I hadn't been washing the, the, the gladiator very often. Uh, I do it occasionally. And I've kind of learned uh, not to wash it. Uh, like when I was uh, this last uh, EJS run, I purposely didn't wash it. I didn't want to get out there and be all shiny and stuff. And I mentioned this on the show before. So I had a bunch of ducks. I've been collecting ducks from people ducking the uh, the gladiator at various events. And we were getting we were coming up on uh, on Moab. And I told okay. my wife, I said, "Do you have something you can put these ducks in? Because I want to clear them off the dash. <laughs> I don't want to be judged." Oh, right. <laughs> 
Because you do. You get judged. You get judged about uh, what you're driving, what which Jeep you have. You get judged about whether you're washing it or not. And 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 it's not the positive. You think that uh, if you wash your Jeep, that's a positive. No, that's a negative. Real Jeepers don't wash their Jeepers. And real Jeepers don't have ducks on their dash. I, I don't mind the ducks. I think the ducks are fun. And they don't. And they stay there whenever I'm uh, going off road. So what do I care? But I took them off because I don't want to be okay. judged. I'm I'm kind of glad that you brought up the ducks because I, I've got to I've got to climb up on a soapbox for just no no 30 climb climb up on a uh, a there little rubber duck. <laughs> there is something happening here in the Pacific Northwest, and and I've I've told you people before that that I'm surrounded by nothing but Birkenstocks and blue hair, and it, it's it, so I live in in an area thankfully that has a lot of Jeep owners. I mean a lot. Um, and uh, from from all eras but with that also comes a plethora of subaru drivers <laughs> we probably have more subarus out here per capita than any other town in the nation and i would almost put that up for a bet now that being said Subaru owners out here kind of go a little bit extreme. There's a lot of lifted Subarus out here. There's really? a lot of Subarus with mud terrain tires. There's there's zombie Subarus where it looks like, okay, there, Captain Overland, you are prepared <laughs> for everything. Yeah. I see it. I get it in your Subaru with the exhaust snorkel. Wow. Awesome. So, yeah, and along with that, over the last couple few months, I've been seeing Subarus with ducks. A whole bunch of ducks on the dashboard, just like the Jeepers, because the Those Subarus, bastards. they want to be Jeepers so effing bad, but they just can't. And so somebody out there is starting to duck Subarus, and they need to be shot, Okay. Take them out back, beat them with a rubber hose, teach them a lesson, blow the kneecap off. I don't care what it takes. It has to stop. Okay, I wasn't a big fan of the ducking thing to begin with. You know, I was all about our, 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 you know, our, our toe tags and, and, our, and our rats with bad attitudes and, and shit like that. <laughs> this whole duck thing has gone to another level. And, and I'm fine. If, if, if you're all about the ducks, that's cool. Each their own. But now that it's entered into the world of Subarus, I'm sorry. It cheapens it. it, it it's bridge too far. <laughs> if the Subarus start doing it, it cheapens it. So uh, it's been a while now, probably maybe two or three months ago. We did a, a story, and I've, I think I've told you about this. Uh, we did a story about Subarus, and they're actually doing their own thing that isn't ducks. You know what I'm talking about? No, I, I actually don't because... It, they're not doing it up here, apparently. <laughs> well, you maybe maybe you need to, to look around. Maybe you're assuming it's ducks because there's this thing that's going on that's called Moo Moo Subaru. It's oh little, little plastic cows? cows that they're cowing the Subarus. So Moo Moo I was Subaru. I'm pretty sure these were ducks. You're probably I mean, right. It, was across, you're, it yeah. was across the intersection. So yeah. So now uh, that you know this, and in our listeners, no, 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 I'm gonna. I, okay. I I I put an asterisk next to everything I just said. All right. <laughs> I may be entirely off base and have identified a duck as a cow, but up here in Portland, where everybody identifies everything as everything else, then it's probably par for the course. Well, we've all been to a bar at 2 a.m., so it's understandable. Um, so the thing that you have to keep in mind is, I would think this is true. Not having Adam's apple. <laughs> <laughs> he wants Good me to help. blow his horn. No. Um, so <laughs> the thing is, is that uh, I would expect in Oregon, especially with these overzealous Subaru Birkenstock uh, people, that a lot of them are vegetarians. Oh yeah. And and I wouldn't think a cow would go very well on one of these mm. these Subarus. Well, <laughs> vegetarians saying. and cows, they're, they're kind of the same thing. They eat, eat a bunch of plants and fart all day long. I mean, it's, it's they're one of the same, so I, I get it. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> do you to wash or not to wash? Yeah, we I love the I love the rabbit trails that we go down. <laughs> From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G, and uh, Tony talked about your uh, G Tops and uh, your G Top giveaway, and I think they're great. But I'm kind of sad that they're only for the uh, 
newer jails, like maybe even JKs and the gladiators that, uh, and once again, us XJ people are left out in the cold. <laughs> so, uh, I developed my own company called, uh, C tops. Yeah. For four ninety nine or a ten percent off Burger King coupon, I will come to your house with a sawzall and cut a hole in the top of your Jeep so you too can enjoy the sunlight. And I know what you're saying, Nikki G. Uh, what do I do when it <laughs> rains? Let's all the water in. Uh, don't worry, all the water that enters through the hole in the roof will quickly exit through the rust hole in the floorboard. Uh, absolutely, problem solved. Well, that's not why I'm calling. I'm calling to tell you that the blue whale is so large that if you laid it end to end in a basketball court, it'll probably cancel the game. <laughs> All right, boys and girls, I'll chat you later, and you have a good one. Bye. You are mine, and I will call you Squishy. Um, so that's a, that's a very interesting uh, idea there, uh, <laughs> Nikki G. <laughs> Have saws all will modify. Have you uh, have you subscribed to the uh, the the DVD audio only DVD that we're uh, we're sending out to people that do not get enough Nikki G? Uh, Forty seven hours of Nikki G call ins on one DVD on one DV, DVD. Good lord! It, Somebody needs to record themselves watching that. <laughs> do do like a Facebook Live pay per view type thing or something like that. I don't know. So you actually, you are one of the rare individuals with an XJ that has a clear top. Not the whole top, but you have, no, was it a sunroof or a moonroof? I have a sunroof, sunroof. sunroof. Sun, moonroof, sunroof, whatever. It has the glass that you can see through, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing that slides, that closes it and all that, and yeah. So is that something that you really liked having on your XJ? They, did it give you a, a different dimension? I was actually having this conversation uh, with somebody just a couple few days ago, and um, I was telling them, you know, if it wasn't for that one feature, I probably would have gotten rid of this 99 and gotten another 97 to, 9, to 2001 um, XJ and just moved everything over. Mm -hmm. But the fact that, that 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 sunroof is there, it's in excellent condition, that I, I had to make my own relay and switch pack for it to get it functioning again. Uh, you know, I got a little little sentimental value, uh, sentimental value into it and stuff like that. You cannot find another Cherokee ninety seven to one with a functioning sunroof in it right now, mm -hmm. especially here in Oregon. It, it, they just, I, I think there was maybe less than five hundred of these things made. I know it wasn't a factory option for all of you XJ guys out there who were screaming, <laughs> "It never came from the factory with a sunroof." No, I know, I know, but nonetheless. I have never seen in Oregon another XJ with a sunroof. Mm -hmm. And I've been to a lot of Jeep shows, hit the trails a lot, seen a lot of other Cherokees, was president of North American XJ Association's uh, Northwest chapter for a number uh, for, a little, for a while. Um, I, I've seen them all. There aren't any other XJs out there with sunroofs. Now, you may have one sitting in the garage somewhere. You know, it's like, you know your buddy, he's got one. But maybe it's the pop-out panel kind or something like that. And that's the other side of that coin is there's not too many that have a functioning sliding sunroof where the sunroof slides back. Okay, so this doesn't pop open. It literally slides no. back like a glass door. I have, it, it does two things. It vents in the back mm -hmm. or it drops down and slides open, just like a regular moonroof would on, on every other car ever made. See, that's really cool. And the reason why I was asking about this is, is because I was wondering how that changed things for you in the enjoyment of your Jeep, you off road or on road, because now you get to see up and out of your Jeep, which you, the I XJ, you can't the, take the top off. No, you do have a little bit of an aspect of the open air, um, the open airness that you get with in like a Wrangler. It's, it's a close second. I understand it's not mm -hmm. the same. Um, but, but it's there, nonetheless. But, but there's nothing and you I, have to take on or put off or any of that stuff. It's no, not open air, no. but you get to enjoy it every time you drive the XJ. Now I will say this, because of the design, it, it it moves into the Cherokee. You know, it doesn't it doesn't uh, the the sunroof doesn't open up and go over the top of the Cherokee. It actually moves into the into the roof. Right. Um. And so with that, the entire head um uh headliner and everything is dropped down about two and a half three inches. Oh, I didn't know this. I'm six foot three. Oh God! There's not much headroom in a Cherokee to start so, with. So there's not a lot of room in a Cherokee as it is. So 
there that is the only downside that i have is like if i'm wearing a hat um or i'm sitting really proud in the seat um my hair is touching mm-hmm. I, I i don't have a whole lot of clearance there so there is that aspect to it so that's the only thing that i don't really like is that i don't have any any headroom in the jeep very cool but again i'm a big guy so so you guys can do the same thing josh has been doing for years despite uh, having g-tops there you go there you go well something else you guys want to get in on uh, much like uh hearing about g-tops and, and other things well we do interviews here on the on the jeep talk show every friday is an interview that means wow. every week friday you're going to hear an interview done by tony done by somebody else done by somebody here at the jeep talk show with an industry expert or somebody who's in the jeep world in some way or another now this friday's interview is unique it's for any jeeper or person out there who loves getting out or on the water and doing some fishing casting out a line and feeling that hit oh man there's nothing like that our next guest is dave stewart of the podcast wet fly swing and if you like fishing especially fly fishing then you're gonna love this interview um, I'll tell you a little something that he told me. I think it is in the, the main part of the podcast, but it may have been us talking before or after. Um, he has had uh, Henry Winkler as a guest on his, his podcast because, wow. because Henry Winkler is a big fly fishing, uh, not expert. Uh, he, he loves doing it. Aficionado. Aficionado. Mm-hmm. I was thinking that, but I, would, I don't know the, pronunci- uh, the pronunciation yeah, or a meaning of that word. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't want to use it. Uh, but uh, I thought that was really cool. Bonds himself is yeah. a fly fisherman. And I'll be darned. Learn something new every day. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I asked him to find out if, uh, if uh, Fonzie ever had a Jeep. So we'll see. Mm. And I now have a connection to the Fonz. So I could always nice. get him on. Get him on the show, right? Get some, yeah. uh, get some Bobby Boucher uh, 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 inside information. <laughs> oh, God. I forgot all about him being on that movie. <laughs> yeah. All right. In our must-have stuff for your Jeep, uh, PRP seats. This is uh, front seat covers for the Jeep Wrangler JLU four-door. It is four hundred and thirty-three dollars and forty-six cents. Does that seem high to you for for there for better seat be covers? front and rear? Nope. These are only fronts. They're only Gosh. fronts, but they Dang. are PRP seats and PRP seats are very well known for their, their full seats. Uh, but now you can just get the covers and get that same quality that you would expect from, uh, the, uh, what's what they, what is actually on the, the PRP seats. I recently saw this. Do you remember, uh, Stacy David from gears? Oh yeah. Uh, I think I told you when we interviewed him that, uh, I found out that gears is still on and it's available on YouTube. So I was watching a Jeep Gladiator build that Stacy David did uh, a couple of months ago, and uh, I thought it was interesting. They went with these PRP seat covers for the build, and the the cool thing was, and this is something that makes it really easy for you to do. Uh, it not only can you upgrade the way your your Jeep looks on the inside, and maybe you just want to upgrade it, make it look different than everybody else's, because we love doing that as Jeepers. Uh, but you also can do customizations like uh, what Stacy David did. He actually had the Gears logo in Broadread into the seat cover. So that made it, uh, that makes it your own. So you may not have a logo. Uh, you could always put something else on there. But since they're covers, you could, uh, if you don't do embroidery, <laughs> you could always take it down and uh, give them the image and have it uh, embroidered on there. Stick it on your cover, and now you have a customized uh, seat for your Jeep. And, the, and they do come in front and backs, but this is only for the fronts. So you can check out uh, this on our show notes for this episode of the Jeep Talk Show. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com and search for episode 1048 for the Amazon link to these PRP seat covers. And if so you, I've, if I've you get a, them, I'd like for you to send us a picture. I'm sorry, Josh, go ahead. So I've got some direct experience with PRP seats. In fact, um, in one of our race cars, we have, we are running PRP seats and well, it's a single seater race car. So, uh, we're running a seat, uh, from PRP seat in that car. Um, this race car hit a, um, large boulder about the size of uh, a 33 inch spare tire. Let's say mm. maybe two of them laying on the ground. Imagine so you need the seat cover day. because of the stain in the seat is where I see no, this no, is no, going. No, 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 not the seat cover. <laughs> it, was actually the, it was actually a PRP race seat. Uh-huh. So they, they, they not only does this company make seat covers, but they've been making seats for the race industry and, and side-by-sides, the UTVs and, and stuff like that for, for many, many years. So this is a company who knows what they're doing when it comes to seats. 
So this PRP seat, racing seat with a five-point harness uh, incorporated into it um, in this uh, UTV race car, um, hit this rock doing around 90 miles an hour. Um, he was airborne Jeez. for about 120 feet um, and went end over end and side over side about eight times each. Um, he was lucky to walk away. Hans device, helmet, um, whole nine yards. The PRP seat held him in place along with restraints and doesn't have a scratch on it. Neither did the driver. Had a little bit of a bump, a little bit of a bruise here and there from when his knee hit the side and when the uh, roll cage was uh, mangled a little bit from the, from the wreck. Um, but the PRP seat held, held in place and held the driver where he was supposed to be. So I would actually bet my life on PRP seats. So if they know anything about seats and seat technology and they've applied even a fraction of that to their covers, I can kind of understand now why they're so expensive. Yeah. Still, that's a steep price for a seat cover, man. Yeah, everything's getting more expensive these days. Let's go, Brandon. Well, who doesn't like a good sale and, and getting some discounts? And we all need some price off of stuff. I mean, heck, look at those seat covers for that kind of a price. Hang, hang on well, just a second. I gave you a great entry into this as far as everything costs more, and you didn't take it. This isn't the Josh I know. You're out of practice because I said I not everything – goes up in price for example <laughs> for example <laughs> the jeep talk show is actually having a sale right now <laughs> and you can get 30 percent off the patreon subscriptions for a limited time and actually for a limited number so um don't delay on this one if you like the jeep talk show if you've enjoyed us you've gotten something out of it you want to give back well consider our patreon and now is the time now couldn't be a better time because we're having a 30 percent off of subscri subscriptions right now. For a limited time and a limited number of subscribers, you can become a subscriber for only $3.50 a month. That is a huge discount. Lock in the rate now by paying for an annual subscription. Head over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. Hit that, hit that link and click and subscribe to the Jeep Talk Show right now. Trust me, you won't have any buyer's remorse. <laughs> and a big shout out to Travis. Travis, this one's for you, buddy. <laughs> Hey, it's always a little sad when we hit the end of the trail, but there's always another trail ride just down the road. Jeep Talk Show has five episodes a week, Monday through Friday. Subscribe and never miss an episode. And speaking of subscribing, and I know you haven't heard this recently, uh, consider keeping the Jeep Talk Show on the air by subscribing to the show via Patreon. The place to go for all the information on how to subscribe and how to contact us is at jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. And yes, we, we all have an Adam's apple over here. <laughs> oh, geez. Broadcasting since 2010. We're doing video now, Josh. We have to, yeah, salute, uh, moon, wave, whatever. All right, y'all, okay, let me drop trousers. Here we go. <laughs> you're my friend. You're my new friend. <laughs>